What do the Lexus LFA, Ford Taurus SHO, and the twin turbocharged Noble M600 have in common? A secret weapon behind the scenes. Yamaha. The world's largest supplier of musical instruments that builds motorcycles, snowmobiles, wave runners, and even golf clubs is in part responsible for some of the greatest cars of all time. And not just the cars I've already mentioned, but dozens of some of our favorites. The stylized trio of interlocking tuning forks is the invisible force that has created some of the greatest designs to ever grace the tarmac. This is the absolutely incredible story about the company behind the scenes that makes the world go fast and sound good. Yamaha. Torakusu Yamaha was born May 20th, 1851 in Japan and was immediately fascinated with machines and technology. See, his father was a member of the Kishu clan, and growing up he'd leverage his access to books to learn everything he could about all things mechanical. By the time he was in his 20s, he'd become a self-taught expert watchmaker. But feeling like he'd mastered that craft and wanting to do more for the world, he got into repairing medical equipment. He mastered that too, but it was in his mid-30s when he got his big break. A local elementary school asked Torakusu to take a look at their broken organ. Others had failed to repair it because organs are one of the most complicated instruments ever made, yet Yamaha quickly and easily found a solution to get it piping again. He was mesmerized by the complicated machine. He loved the look, the, the sound, and it was the first device he'd ever put hands on that felt like it had a soul. Inspired, Mr. Yamaha, along with the help of a colleague, built the first ever Japanese-made organ. Two months in, they had their first one, but his friends said it looked awful and sounded worse. So he moved next to the University of Art and Music in Tokyo, and with the help of a few professors, they built a new version. This time, it wasn't awful. In fact, it was so good, he instantly received seven orders, which gave way to founding his first company in 1887, Nippon Gakiko LTD, which we now know as the Yamaha Corporation. The company was an instant success, and by the year 1900, Yamaha started building pianos too, Unfortunately, Torakusu Yamaha passed away in 1916 at the age of 65, but the Yamaha Corporation was in good hands. Because Japan was in the middle of the Great War in 1920, they knew musical instruments couldn't be imported. So Yamaha expanded its product line to include not just organs, but pianos, xylophones, and harmonicas too. And the company grew from just two guys building an organ to over a thousand employees producing over 10,000 instruments a year. Over the next couple decades, they'd become the largest supplier of premium pianos in the world. It wasn't till after World War II, Yamaha president Genichi Kawakami saw an opportunity to create another premium product that made noise. Although this time, the sound would come from an internal combustion engine. Like everything Yamaha did, it was an all or nothing venture, and the Yamaha YA-1 was nothing short of perfection. Based on the German DKW RT125, the YA1 was a peppy 125cc two-stroke that not only looked good, but absolutely ripped. In its first year, Yamaha cautiously entered the Mount Fuji Ascent, where it placed first, second, and third. Everyone thought it was beginner's luck, until they followed it up with back-to-back -back first, second, and third place finishes at the All Japan Auto Bike Endurance Road Race. What started out as a pet project by Yamaha's president became an overnight sensation. So much so that they incorporated the Yamaha Motor Company for two- and four-wheel ventures. Riding on the success of the two-wheeled wonder, in 1961, they wanted more and took a huge financial risk developing their first car, a sports car codenamed the YX30, which was a beautifully penned fiberglass shell hiding a high-tech, all-aluminum 1.6-liter dual overhead cam four-cylinder under the hood. As good as it looked, Yamaha decided to nix the project. It was expensive to build a prototype, and the financial burden to market their first car to the public would prove too costly. They built the perfect team of engineers to make the ideal sports car. They just didn't have the financial backing. So Yamaha pitched Nissan in 1964 to team up and let them update their YX30 prototype and turn it into Nissan's halo car, the A550X. And Nissan liked the idea until they didn't. Specifically, the idea of their Halo car having a 1.6 liter engine spitting out just 88 horsepower. They didn't want to develop a new engine from scratch for the project, so Nissan bagged the collaboration altogether. 
This was at a time when BMW had the 2002, Ford had the GT40, Lotus had the Elan, and Chevrolet had the Corvette. Sports car sales were at an all-time high, but the manufacturing darling of Japan, Toyota, had nothing. However, Yamaha had an idea on how to make it happen fast. Toyota didn't say the YX30 was ugly, but they did say that they would handle the chassis and bodywork and Yamaha was in charge of the muscle. Having only R&D to four-cylinder, Yamaha knew they needed, well, at least two more. But instead of starting from scratch, they yanked the two-liter inline six out of a Toyota Crown, a new aluminum cylinder head, twin cams, triple Makuni carburetors, and some fine tuning later, they were able to find nearly 40% more power than the 108 brake horsepower Toyota figure. It might not sound like a whole lot, but for the 60s, it was a screamer. The end result was the Toyota 2000 GT, the first ever Japanese supercar, hand built in Yamaha's own factory, and more importantly, the first collaboration Yamaha had done with another automaker. It was priced higher than the Porsches and Lotuses of the time, and yet at a $6,800 MSRP, it still didn't turn a profit. But it was chalked up as a huge success anyway by both Toyota and Yamaha. And cars already in production benefited from the collaboration too. Yamaha took the nasally 4A power plant pushing just 70 horsepower, and with some engineering magic, increased power output to 120. They named it the 4AGE, and it almost doubled the horsepower in cars like the Celica and MR2, and created a drifting legend out of the AE86. And it didn't stop with Toyota. Other manufacturers wanted in on the Yamaha secret sauce too. In the 80s, Ford came to bat with their new front wheel drive sedan, the Taurus, and asked Yamaha to build a hot version that would kick the catalytic converters off the competition. And in just a few months, Yamaha had turned the 140 horsepower Vulcan V6 into a 220 horsepower stoplight hero. Badged the Taurus SHO, the four-door muscle car sold over 15,000 units in its first year. Chalk another win up for Yamaha, but they were just getting started. Over the next few years, the triple tuning forks had their hands on projects like the Volvo 960, De Tomaso Deville, Isuzu Piazza, Audi 80, Alfa Romeo 164, and perhaps most impressively, the McLaren F1 and Bugatti's EB110. V8s for Ford, Aston Martin, Volvo, and the C4 ZR1, screaming inline fives like the one in the V70R and the recent TTRS, the three-cylinder wonder found in the GR Yaris and Corolla, and it's not just engines, electric drivetrains like the one in the Tesla Model S and the hybrid portion of the McLaren P1, and they did the suspension tuning on a number of these and for cars like the MR2, Holden Commodore, Toyota 86, the list goes on forever. But a few of their projects stand out above the rest. Would you believe if I said Yamaha helped build the most iconic Japanese 3 liter twin turbo tuner engine of the century? And then not only shrunk it down, but made it even better? Enter the 503E, a 2.1 liter inline four that revved to over 11,000 RPM and made over 500 horsepower. It replaced the 2J in the legendary Castrol Tom's Mark IV Super race car and helped Toyota narrowly wedge out Nissan Skyline GTR for the GT500 championship in 1997. So when Toyota approached Yamaha with a new secret project they were working on, a sleek supercar slaying V10 coupe that would become their next halo car, Yamaha was ready to keep pushing the envelope. Riding the absolute tidal wave of success the company had seen since their launch in the early 90s, Toyota's luxury arm needed a halo car. They needed the world to see and hear the Lexus Future Advance, or LFA. It was the pursuit of impossible, taking the team 10 years of collaboration to create an engineering masterpiece, again by dividing and conquering. Yamaha created the godly 4.8 liter V10 that makes probably the best noise to ever come from a car. Their engineers created all new acoustic designs that of course sound like actual heaven, but also allow it to breathe like no engine before, resulting in a specific output of 115 horsepower per liter. It has a dual stage intake manifold, titanium valves and connecting rods, and a dry sump oiling system. That combined allow it to rev to 9,000 RPM so quickly that Toyota was forced to use a digital rev counter. A mechanical one simply couldn't keep up. The carbon fiber body and frame surrounded the 553 horsepower heartbeat, 
which helped the LFA top out at over 200 miles an hour. Public reception was truly remarkable, and little did they know that the attention to detail and knowledge brought on by Yamaha would leave a huge mark on the automotive industry. Toyota did the unthinkable, and once again, Yamaha was secretly playing behind the scenes. What started as a curious child repairing watches ended up one of the largest secret weapons in the automotive industry, and we can't wait to see what they come up with next. Thank you all for watching, go check out some other ideal car stories right over here, like the one on how Lexus was born, or the history of Honda. We've got a new story rolling out every week, so get subscribed and stay tuned for more. We'll see you in the next one.